So finally the long wait is over. We have received Yang Yong ships. Well technically we have received one Yang Yong ship, the Kanyu Logistic Assault, which is a very interesting battle cruiser. And well today I'll be showing you how to build and fly this thing since this is such a this is such a rare uh, ship and honestly very unique. More Yang Yong ships are obviously on the way. The developers have confirmed that in one of the last ask me anything events so if you ask me they could be launched any day now but let's take a look at the stats of this thing first now this is a logistic battle cruiser which is you know we already have a bunch of these but very interesting to have a, a yang yung logistic ship although besides being a loggy this ship can also do some damage i mean it's in the name can you logistic assault? Can you be a logistic or assault? Well, this thing can do both. This ship said yes to both. It has a uh, decomposer range and decomposer damage bonus, of course. It does have plus one warp stability. It does get decomposer damage, which you know, is, is okay. You can use decomposers if you like on this ship. But of course, since it is also a logistic, it does have bonus on remote repairs. In this case, the remote shield repairs, which is nice. Always nice to have that option when you need to repair your drones or, or you know, uh, your corporation members or fleet members. This ship also can fit large drones, which is, I, I believe, the only battle cruiser that's able to do that, which means you can fit those large combat drones. You can also use the sentries. This is the only non battleship ship that's can fit sentries which is also one very unique uh, trait of the of the cannulars it also has some bonus on drone shield boost amount which is uh, very interesting it does have a bonus on the overall shield volume as well and a bonus on war speed so a classic classic young ship which is you know uh, something that we have been waiting for and as I mentioned before there is more there's more of these ships coming and of course when you look at the thing I mean you can look at the stats if you like uh, but let me show you the build so I managed to I, I built this ship uh, in the well, with the idea to be able to basically counter every single possible situation out there so this is basically the product of that uh, idea and uh, it does have some decent DPS, 875 DPS is, is pretty good. Now, the blaster here is good against medium sized targets, you know, some cruisers, some battle cruisers. And with the tracking of blasters, you can easily uh, hit frigates with it as well. So, good uh, for close combat, and overall, does have some pretty good uh, DPS to it. So, blasters are definitely nice. No, I actually did not want to put a uh, small beam laser. I actually wanted to put a small pulse laser and a C-type at that. It's uh, the, the small laser is good, so, you know, against some very small shit like interceptors and you know frigates that get too close to you. If your blasters can hit them well, then the small pulse laser definitely will has a very good tracking and overall a very short range. But it's a small weapon and it's good against small targets. It is able to track them without much of a problem. And that's why the pulse laser is there and does have some good uh, dps to it as well which is you know always always helpful it doesn't have as much range as the beam laser though but you know you don't really need range uh, again this is against drones against frigates stuff like that that against pods i mean stuff that gets close now i have a x type medium auto can here uh, the reason for the for the x type can well you know you sometimes want to have a bit more dps on your ship right so auto cans are always a good choice. The next type auto cans have like some very scary rate of fire. They're good against every single possible ship type. You can use it against frigates. I mean, it's good against medium-sized targets as well. Battle cruisers, cruisers, and even battle ships. I mean, you cannot go wrong with a auto cannon. And a uh, X large X type uh, large auto cannon. This is specifically for larger ships uh, versus battle cruisers and battle ships. Uh, it does have some very good DPS. It doesn't have much tracking, but you have the other weapons to basically help you out if you are stuck with a small target. A small Nosferatu, just to maintain, to be easy on the power grids, uh, just to maintain the capacity recharge. A dampener, a target painter, and well, I, I don't know why I have the 
update and other but it's it's there it can be useful if you decide to run some pv stuff with it or you know to scan some sites and stuff it, it does work really well in that case now as for the drones well i have as i already mentioned you can fit a uh, large drones which i obviously did but you know uh, you can uh, if you ever decide if you're bored and you know, if you want to do something different you can actually fit the large mining drones on this ship as well so you can go and do mining with it as as long as you have those drones equipped uh, so the can you kind of do can do mining as well very interesting uh, I believe no one expects a mining canyon, so it's very interesting that you can do that. Still has some good DPS, by the way, over 400 DPS, so you can technically use the drones, the mining drones, as bait in a belt, and then you can have pirates attempt to kill your ship, and then you kill them. I mean, you have you are covered against everything. You have blasters, you have lasers, you have auto cannons. You can fight smaller ships, medium-sized ships, very small ships, and large ships. You are covered with everything. But uh, at the same time, you know, you, sometimes you want to have. Uh, a drone for every single possible situation, right? So uh, you can also fit one large drone, a medium drone, a scout light drone, and well, you can fit any other drone type that you like in the four slot, depending on what you are fighting. So you also can be uh, can cover every single possible situation with the drones as well. Good idea. You can also fit some mining drones in the combination as well. You know, as uh, you, while fighting the enemy, you can also farm mine their salt, I guess, with the mining drone. So it does have a, a specific purpose for that as well, and you can easily uh, pull that off. And this is how it would look. But I personally prefer to have those large drones, you know, just because they seem to. I don't know, I mean, large ogres have the, the offense, large ogres are like the highest possible DPS, so you can keep using them, you can use any combination that you like. This also works just fine. Not a big issue at all. Uh, no problems with the DPS or the damage application. It will apply DPS to everything easily, so not a big issue. If, especially if you have like max out skills, this is going to work flawlessly. Now, as for the low slots, I have one extender just to extend the shield a little bit. Uh, but I actually wanted to fit a large extender, but unfortunately, did not have enough power it to do that. So I just ended up being stuck with a medium one. Uh, although I can expand that with a general unit, I'll come to the implants a little later, but uh, I put a higher grade extender, a X-type adaptive armor hardener, because, you know, you cannot go wrong with uh, some armor tank on your on your ta on your ship. A armor plate to extend the armor a little bit, because, you know, you never know when... You never know when, when that can, like... You know, be be helpful. I actually wanted to fit a large uh, 1600 millimeter plate, but did not have enough power, unfortunately, for that as well. I mean, this is a Bellacruz in the end, so you will mostly be stuck with the medium mode. Just how sized the weapon, though. So that's the most important thing that I did there. As you can see, no power for the for the for the large for the large plate. But you know, the medium one should do just fine. 400 millimeters, 800 millimeters should be just fine. It does extend the armor quite a little bit, and armor repair and a shield booster to maintain both the armor and shield. You know, when your when your shield goes down, you you can still fight. I mean, you have an armor repair, so that works. As for the rigs, uh, let me put a tier four burst just to expand that alt cannon DPS a little bit. There we go, 93.32. Even the DPS now is much better than before. A missile rig, just in case you decide to use missiles, you can also use missiles if you like. I mean. Uh, I don't judge you. If you like to use missiles, use missiles. And I did add some mining rigs as well. You know, you never know when uh, you want to decide to go out and do some mining out there. You, you can have mining drones, right? So you can easily just slap on some mining rigs and just go mine belts, I guess, when you get bored. A universal all-around purpose ship. Perfect for every single possible situation out there. Now, the Nano Core is the Kanyu Easter Core. Uh, I mean, it's April now, so Easter is right around a corner. Sometimes, somewhere it actually started already, so you can use this core, it's decent. You get the core basic with the ship for free, so that's a very uh, good thing. And for the implants, now, you can use any implant that you like. Uh, I mean, you have every single possible weapon out there, so you can pick whatever weapon implant you like. I'll, I'll go with the Barrage, though. Since I have two auto cannons, might as well go with the barrage implant. It uh, should have some decent DPS to it. And, uh, you know, barrage does give some very juicy looking DPS there. Can be very helpful for PvP. No one expects, like, a canyon with auto cannons that, that can, like, 
that can have, have like 2000 DPS, so that's pretty good. A very good bait ship. And it does have some very good tank to it as well. I mean, we're about to see the active stats of the ship. I'm very, very confident when it comes to tank. I mean, um, I, if there's anything I'm known for, I'm known for having like very tanky ships. And this thing is no different. So, uh, let me just readjust the modules just to, you know, have a, a good looking layout here. That, that looks so beautiful. Perfect. Okay. Uh, well, I, that analyzer there will be in the, in the corner because I'm not going to be doing some analyzing anytime soon here. 1797.36 DPS, which is pretty good actually. Uh, very surprised. I mean, that's, that's some decent DPS for a uh, loggy ship. I mean, keep in mind, this is technically a logistic ship as well as a combat ship. I mean, can you loggy? Can you assault? That's basically all the thing about this thing. And, you know, uh, 99,000 hit points, almost 100,000, which is really good for a battle cruiser. So I cannot complain about the tank on this thing at all, and the build looks really solid so far. So let's take this thing out and let's uh, see how it will perform in combat. I'm fairly sure uh, that DPS will come in handy. I mean, the autocannons are really solid. Uh, I definitely have no complaints about the DPS on this ship. Everything is just perfect on the Canyon Logistic Assault. It is a Auto surprisingly engaged. robust and surprisingly well I mean surprisingly tanky ship I guess and it does have a very interesting hull design. I mean it looks like a sword. Very curious to see Work how the battleship Kanyo ship will look. I'm fairly sure uh, they will look in one way or the other pretty awesome. And you might I mean we might see these ships uh, literally like next month or in the next two months since the developers are literally focusing on small ships now so uh, I'm very excited to see how that works. Now the thing about this ship, you don't need to have any capacitor batteries on it. You have that combat loggy mode, which is very nice. You don't you have something similar available to the other logistic battlecruisers, a recharge mode basically, which does uh, en enhance your capacity recharge, basically uh, faster recharge, which means that you don't have to have any capacitor batteries if you are focusing the build on, let's say, active tank then you can build the ship in such a way that you can maintain the the tank running at all times which can come quite in handy when you want to do some pvp these ships are very 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 rough uh, when it comes to the you know pvp combat performance and when i say pvp combat performance when you built them as a bait loggy ship they are actually really good very tough to crack you need really high dps to break the tank uh, although you know high dps can still kind of be problematic when you just look at those alt cans how fast they're firing with the barrage implant that barrage implant uh, this come in handy a lot when it especially when it comes to like pvp i mean i use it on the makari event on the other cannon ships all day basically and oh, i'm pretty happy with it uh pretty happy with the barrage implant so one thing that I'm personally looking forward to is how the other Kanyu ships will work and of course the decomposer implant which if they do release them they will have to release a decomposer implant at one point and I believe that one is going to be very similar to how the focused crystal implant works. But that Megathon here is in some big trouble. I am uh, close at zero. The, the shield is slowly going up but that's, that's fine. I also have the armor repair running. And the thing is, with the salt recharge, well, I can keep both shield. Well, I can keep both the armor repair and the shield boost running at all time. There is no issue with the capacitor on this ship, which is very nice. I mean, if I did go, I, I could have changed the engineering rigs to enhance the capacitor recharge even more, which would be a lot more helpful. Um, but I decided to just go with the mining rigs because you know there you have some rocks here. You can you can drop the. the the mining drones and just f you know decide to mine the asteroid belts here while you fight with the rats. We saw combat mining can be fun, honestly. I and mean, in the new Calaval expanse and in the cobble, uh, in not cobble head, but in the in the new region, I forgot its name, uh, expanse or something. Uh, <laughs> there you can also do some combat mining since there's a chance that uh, drones will spawn in the in the belts. So I mean, this ship is actually very solid when it comes to the mining performance. Uh, combat 
Loggy plus mining is just a perfect combination. You can do everything with this thing and it will work. It will work really, really well. Absolutely no complaints with absolutely no complaints with with that. Uh, I am I was actually very surprised when I first looked at this thing. Uh, it is one of the few ships, one of the few free. Well, I mean, this is a free ship. You can, you know, you get this thing for free. Uh, it's one of the few ships that were good by default. Now the insurance cost is something that we might discuss. Is a bit on the on the bad side. The, I forgot how much the IP cost on, on these things. Uh, I think it was like eight billion or something, which is you know kind of on the, on the higher end. Uh, but you know, uh, this ship has so much tank to it. Has decent DPS. And will uh, decent and maneuverable, so we, you're not very likely to lose this ship. Uh, you might be a big target because it's a rare ship, everyone wants to have a rare ship killed, but you know, this ship is, you know, not that easy to take out. And I do have interest in the, in the Logi Canyon, uh, might decide to fly one myself and I'll use a build that's very similar to this but now my shield is down and as you can see the armor repair and booster still manage to maintain both well I mean the, the armor repair is definitely maintaining the armor but uh, it, it is still visible that the ship booster does do some work and it makes armor repairing much easier that's why I'm able to maintain both and well after the big ship is destroyed the armor will start repairing a little bit faster since the DPS is now going to be much lower. And as you can see it holds really well. This is just a fantastic build honestly. I mean I'm I'm very surprised by how tanky it is. And as you can see when I'm in the recharge mode the longer range of the auto cannon of the large X type auto cannon does allow me to hit the targets that are still far away so the auto cannon can the large auto cannon can still the, la the large X type auto cannon can still be useful uh, at shooting on smaller targets if they are far away. Since you have more range than uh, let's say on the on the pulse laser on the, on the on the blaster, and you have definitely have more range than the medium auto cannon. The drones can also help, but you know the, the large auto cannon, large X type auto cannon is doing a very good job when it comes to uh, long range long range combat uh, but the drones are also as I mentioned before really good would be better if I did have like the previous combination of drones that they had like have every drone of every type it could be very helpful against somebody I mean the, the light drones are good against lot small ships the medium drones are good against small and, and medium ships and large ones and the large ones are good against medium and large ships so yeah, I won't be able to cover everything if I did decide to change the drones. I could, but I just like to use the for offense ogres, uh, since that seems to be uh, what I personally like to use most. But you can use any other uh, drone combination that you like. It will work just fine, and in some cases it will work even better. So you don't have to worry about, about the drone performance on this thing. It has some very good drones. Yeah, definitely some very good and my armor is fully repaired which is good so now I can keep the boost running and I'll boost the shield as you can see it works really well I mean uh, absolutely no problems running PvE performance is okay I mean could have been better if I did have a slightly different build but I, I think this should do just fine I mean it it runs perfectly fine obviously uh, haven't died yet with it so I think that's more than enough to be acceptable as a very decent very decent build so uh, last ship uh, and then we will be flying to the station uh, if the other Kanyu ships uh, there will be fashion ships by the way if they are very similar to this one they're going to be very fun ships I remember in, in the battle test the uh, Kanyu was like uh, overpowered and uh, we used to be able to have like 2000 DPS cold back and they would be very scary. And these ships will definitely change the, the game when they are launched. So it's going to be a very interesting day when they are when they are released. Well, I mean, technically they are, they are already released. Oh, we have this thing. Technically they are already released, but 
that will be more and I'm very excited about the, the rest of the Kanyu ships that that uh, should be added. I'm also excited for the battleship Kanyu ship, that's going to be a very fun one. Because I believe that that thing is going to be very scary and could potentially be uh, game changing. And I'll definitely have a very similar build to what I have right now on that ship since this build works so well. Very happy with the build, by the way, no complaints. And the shield is slowly recharging, so it will be. The shield will be fully, fully uh, recharged. Well then, uh, will be time to hit the autopilot and will be time to dock. So that would be it for the Kanyu logistic assault. A very nice and very interesting Warp little special ship. Definitely a very nice little gift and I'm very happy with the build, very happy with the performance and I'm definitely looking forward for the other Kanyu ships to, to be added. And well with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you would like to support me, feel free to like and subscribe. And with that being said, stay safe, stay safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.